Okay, so we move on to the next uh, approach to handling deadlock, which is allowing the system to enter a deadlock state. The previous two approaches, deadlock prevention and deadlock avoidance, uh, ensures that uh, the deadlock will not happen, meaning every request, uh, uh, talking about deadlock prevention, uh, what it does is to prevent or violate the at least one of the conditions at least one of the four conditions of uh, the existence of for a deadlock to occur avoidance uh, is somehow similar to prevention but it focuses only on the prevention of the circular weight uh, requirement for a deadlock preventing the circular weight and avoidance of course require that the processes will declare or uh, will claim will tell the system beforehand the maximum number of resources it will need in its in the process lifetime so the next approach is uh, allowing the deadlock to happen meaning uh, when a process requests for a resource, give that to the resource uh, to the process immediately. Right, so you give it to the process immediately, and then later on, as the system is progressing or perhaps some timer, it will run uh, an algorithm that will detect the existence of deadlocks and then recover from it. So that's the main difference. Right? So. Uh, you have the in in the in allowing the system to enter a deadlock state. Uh, basically, for every every request, you grant every request that a process will need, and then check later whether the there is whether there is deadlock in the system. So. Uh, deadlock detection will allow uh, here uh, it allows the system to enter a deadlock state and then it must have a detection algorithm and a recovery scheme now uh, similar to avoidance there are two ways to perform uh, deadlock detection depending on the resource the number of instances of the resource type for a single instance of a resource type uh, similar to the uh, resource allocation graph with a claim edge uh, here uh, in deadlock detection we actually eliminate the resources and the resource allocation graph becomes a wait for graph so nodes only processes are the nodes in this graph and uh, the edge let's say p sub i uh, arrow p sub j indicates that uh, process i is waiting for uh, process j so uh, what it does is to periodically invoke this algorithm the same approach as avoidance cycle detection and if the cycle uh, if there is a cycle then there exists a deadlock in the system and that algorithm to detect a cycle in a graph requires an order of n squared operations where n is the number of vertices in the graph again uh, in uh, deadlock detection we have a wait for a graph wherein the nodes are purely processes there are no nodes that are resources so this here is an example of uh, a conversion from uh, a resource allocation graph to a wait for graph this is the original uh, resource allocation graph and this is the wait for graph what basically what happened is you remove the resources so for example p1 to p2 so you, you took a shortcut so you remove the resource and then just connect p1 and p2 and you get this uh, edge here for the wait for graph and the algorithm is again uh, when the 
at, at a certain period of time, uh, the deadlock detection algorithm will be called and then the state of the system will be examined whether there is a cycle. And if there's a cycle in the wait for a graph, then uh, a deadlock exists in the system. So if you look at this graph, for example, so can you see a cycle or cy cycles? Of course you can. So you have a cycle here and you have a bigger cycle here and then you have a cycle here. So the system is in a deadlock state because uh, there are actually cycles in the wait for graph. Okay. Now for several instances of a resource type, uh, the mechanism is similar to the bankers algorithm. So you, again, you have the vector available, then you have the matrix allocation, and you have the request matrix. Okay. So a request matrix is an N, N is the number of processes, M is the number of resources, indicates the current request of each process. If request IJ equals K, then that means that uh, process I is requesting K, more instances of resource type RJ. So the algorithm, again, this algorithm uh, is for resource types with more than one instance. So the algorithm uh, almost uh, is almost similar to the bankers algorithm. So you have work and finish vectors, and then you initialize work available, and then for i equals one to n, uh, if allocation, see here allocation of matrix, okay. It's not equal to zero, then uh, finish i equals false, otherwise finish i equals true. Then the next step, find an index i such that it satisfies this criteria. And then if no such i exists, go to step four. Okay. Otherwise, you perform the allocation. Okay. okay, so that is basically almost similar to the uh, bankers algorithm. But you have uh, some criteria here okay, to differentiate it from the bankers algorithm. And uh, the runtime of this algorithm is O of M times N squared okay, to detect uh, whether the system is in a de deadlock state. So again, deadlock detection is quite an expensive operation. So it's quadratic here with the uh, quadratic on the number of processes and you have a constant for the number of resource type so it's quite an expensive operation okay so here you have uh, an instance of a detection algorithm so you have uh, the state of the system you have uh, five processes three resource types and a time t, this is the snapshot or the state of the system, time t zero. And then uh, we'll get a sequence after running the algorithm uh, with result of finish i equals true for all i. Okay. So then here comes a request. Okay. So will the system uh, still remain in the or will the system uh, be in a deadlock state? Okay. So the state of the system can reclaim resources held by process P0, but insufficient resources to fulfill other processes or requests. Okay. So a deadlock will exist okay, by running the, this algorithm here. Okay. And this will be the processes that are in a deadlock state. Process P1, P2, P3, and P4, if you run the algorithm. Okay. So, when should you run the detection algorithm? Okay. Uh, when and how often uh, to invoke will depend on the likelihood of a deadlock happening. Uh, you cannot call it every time because it's an explicit operation. Uh, how many processes will need to be rolled back? Okay. Uh, so, for example, here you have uh, 
one, two, three, four. Four processes are involved in a deadlock. Okay? So, how are you going to roll back? How many of those processes? Are you just going to remove one, roll back one process, two processes, or all of these processes that are involved in the deadlock? So, one for each disjoint cycle. Uh, if the detection algorithm is invoked arbitrarily, okay, uh, there may be many cycles in the resource graph, and so we would not be able to tell which of the many deadlock processes cause the uh, deadlock. So, uh, for example, this graph. So you never know if you invoke the uh, detection algorithm arbitrarily at some at some point in time. Uh, you will not be able to trace what caused the deadlock, which process caused the deadlock, because several events has happened or have happened already, so you cannot pinpoint the exact process that triggered or that caused the deadlock. Is it this, this, this process or this process? So you cannot tell. But that's what we mean by uh, this one. So once, uh, so deadlock, uh, the approach is allow the approach for allowing the deadlock to happen uh, is composed of two steps. You have deadlock detection. So okay, we have a deadlock. So we have determined we found a cycle for a resource uh, for a for a claim for a claim for a, a wait for graph. Okay, we found a cycle or uh, this algorithm uh, resulted to a, a deadlock. Okay, shown here. So, what do we do? How do we recover from a deadlock? Okay. So, there are several approaches. Uh, the first one is to abort all the deadlock processes. So, in this example, uh, P1, P2, P3, and P4 are involved in a deadlock. So, we can terminate them all. Or, we can abort one process at a time, increasing process, process ID number, until the deadlock is eliminated. So, for example, you can have uh, the order, of course, will be dependent on the priority of the process, how long the process has computed, and how much longer to completion. So, most probably, you won't select processes that are uh, almost about to finish because. Uh, that process has performed a lot of computations already, so we better let that process finish. Uh, the resources the processes has used, uh, the resources the processes the process needs to complete. If, for example, a process will require uh, several other resources that are being held by other processes, then and instead of waiting for that, maybe you can terminate the process because. The probability that process will get access to that to the resources being held by other processes will be low. Uh, how many processes will need to be terminated? Uh, and of course, uh, the last uh, criteria is: is the process interactive or a batch process? So most likely, if you have an interactive uh, uh, process, you can kill that already. Or, uh, but if you kill a batch process, it, that batch process might be running for a long time already. So you cannot just terminate that, forcefully terminate that particular process that is involved in the deadlock. So uh, another, so one approach is to terminate the process. Another approach is to uh, preempt resource preemption, preempt resources. So the idea is to. Uh, Again, in uh, if uh, you have uh, a deadlock, okay, you can uh, basically remove the resources involved in the deadlock, okay, and uh, you have to consider a lot of variables like uh, selecting a victim, okay. So of course you would like to minimize the cost. So, for example, a process is using this resource, the disk resource, and it's almost complete. Uh, doing the process is almost done in its 
task. Then you suddenly remove the disk from that particular process. So that might be a costly operation. Uh, rollback, return to some safe state, restart process for that state. So basically, uh, you roll back the state. Uh, you have a sequence of instruction of uh, a particular process. So you have you can you can go back so that the resources will not be requ will not have been requested. You can go back in the previous state of the process. And the starvation, uh, same process may always be picked as a victim. So the problem with that is okay, uh, based on the criteria, some process will might be uh, uh, starved, meaning they will always be selected. Okay, so that process will be removed from uh, accessing that a particular resource. So that's about it uh, on the chapter of deadlocks. Okay, so that's it.